Alright guys, welcome back! Welcome to my 8th and final installment of my Adobe Illustrator CC tutorial on how to illustrate or vectorize a car. In this series we covered this BMW F30 from start to finish. In today's video we're going to cover the side mirrors, the door handles, and tying up odds and ends before you publish your work. And be sure to stick around to the very end. I've saved a little bit of bonus footage for you guys that I think you might like. All right, so let's just get started by creating a new layer, another new layer, and we're gonna call this mirror. Now, a lot of the stuff that's going to be taking place in this video today is a lot of the same stuff that we've been covering throughout the entire series. So right now I'm just drawing a few basic paths to get started so that I can get my bearings for the rest of this mirror illustration. I treat each part of the car as almost like its own illustration, hence why they all live on their own individual layers. Okay, so now that we have a few basic shapes drawn, we can start to assign those paths some colors that kind of match match the car and are part of the same color family that we've been using. And by doing this, all I'm doing is selecting each path with my selection tool and then using my eyedropper tool to pick up different colors. And then here is a piece of plastic for my turn signal or for my turn signal, for this turn signal. So I'm using the gradient there just to show that it's a little bit reflective. And we'll do the same thing at the very top of the mirror too. Using the pen tool, we're gonna draw this lighter colored shape at the top that's going to act as a highlight on the top of this mirror. So I'll use my eyedropper tool, pick up the white to white gradient, and drag that out. Always adjust later. Sometimes it always looks funny when you turn everything back on. I usually like to always go back and adjust shapes if I can. So keeping in the rule of thumb is to not overcomplicate it. I'm just gonna draw a few more shapes so that I can give this mirror a little bit more depth and it doesn't look flat. Now since it's on the outside of the car and I usually have a stroke around those body lines and around the outside of the car when I'm finished, these paths will also get a black stroke along with their fill color. All right, let's draw a big shadow here at the bottom and then we're gonna take that path and we're going to drag it all the way down and place it on top of the original path. So now we have a deep shadow underneath. It's starting to come together. All right, so this shape is kind of wonky. So I'm gonna come back in here and adjust this just so that it lines up. Again, this is not going to be seen on Instagram, but if the client ever wants to print this uh, as a large banner, you might as well just take the time to do this now while you're drawing it. Otherwise, you're never going to go back. At least I don't, <laughs> unless it's like something glaringly obvious that I see. Like this highlight, for example, on top of the mirror that we just drew. So I'm coming back in here with my selection tool and I'm just grabbing these nodes and anchor points and just adjusting each one individually to get the shape exactly how I want it. So since we've been playing with gradients on the body panels of this BMW, why not add one to the roof? I mean, the light source is coming from up there. I could have easily just duplicated that shape, but instead I decided to draw a whole new one. Um, so here you can just take your gradient tool or G on your keyboard and just play with it. And whatever looks good to you and lends itself to the illustration well is what you should stick with. All right, time for the driver mirror. This is in the uh, distance, so it's not, it's, it doesn't need to be as exact or as precise, those are the same thing, as the other mirror. The other mirror is in the foreground of the, of the picture, so we wanna 
make sure that the detail is on that mirror. This mirror just needs to have enough to add some depth and make sure that it's not forgotten about. Again, we're going to take these paths and drag them where we want. So I wanted that underneath the other two other three paths that we drew in the beginning. And now we'll add another reflective path down here and a deep shadow. One more. And you know what? I think I'm going to select all of those shapes and create my another new layer. And we'll just call this mirror passenger. No, wait. It's the driver mirror. But you get it. Even I get turned around sometimes. That's why I label things driver and passenger. Because I soon forget. I did here. So I'm going back into my layers palette. And I'm making sure that each layer has the correct shapes in it and is labeled correctly. This just helps keep your file as organized as possible and if you ever have to come back and do a revision you can get to it quickly without sorting through hundreds and hundreds of paths. I think this I think this particular illustration is about 700 paths, maybe maybe 750. So now we can go through and just polish this up by adding a little bit of that reflective gradient that we've created. All right, now let's do the door handles. So another new layer, and we're gonna name this door handle, obviously. So now we'll just draw this main path. That's gonna be the bottom. And just like everything else, we're gonna build on top of that. Not overcomplicating it. I'm just going to draw one path for this top part of the handle make sure that everything lines up and I have an okay color on it for now. And then that half will be for the shadow of the handle. Make sure to draw this line for the stroke and if your door handle has that too, uh, I suggest putting it in there. That way it's just consistent with the rest of the illustration if you're going to use a black stroke for the body lines like I have on this illustration. So just like we did with the mirror, I'm going through with my eyedropper tool and I'm selecting colors that I've already used on other parts of the vehicle. All right, so let's draw the highlight on the top of this handle. I'm gonna switch this over to stroke by clicking that arrow. And then we're gonna come down here to profile in the stroke dialog box and click stroke profile one. There's not a clever name for it. It's just stroke profile one. Now to extend this, I'm going to click that anchor point with the pen tool and then extend this line down with another anchor point. That looks pretty good. Let's lighten up the top of that handle, make it stand out a little bit more, and let's put a highlight on top of that. Using the anchor point or using the eyedropper tool, just pick up that stroke that we just drew prior. And I think I'm going to actually do the exact same thing on the bottom. And repeat that. Nice. That looks good. So now we'll select the whole thing and we'll duplicate that and move it to the back. Now it's not going to be exact, but you can adjust it and play with it a little bit. Stretch it out. It's going to be a little bit smaller than the one in the front. But as long as it lines up and once you zoom out, if it's believable enough, keep it. It'll save you a lot of time. And that looks really good. Oh wait, one more thing. Let's select everything but the wheels in the shadow. And I'm just gonna use the down arrow on my keyboard to lower this bad boy. Awesome. Now believe it or not, this car is actually lowered on springs, but for the aesthetic of the illustration, I like to lower it a little bit more without slamming it to the ground. All right, guys, if you liked this video, please give me a big thumbs up. It really does help. And if you're interested in more car related nonsense, please consider subscribing. I do have new tutorials planned. I also have new illustrations going. So stay tuned for more content in the future. Also, don't forget to reach out via Instagram or comment down below if you have a special request. Now, stay tuned for that promised bonus footage.